Hello there, once again, this is Anton from Anton Bay, and thank you for stopping by the collection room and taking a look at some comics with me today. Today is a little bit of a haul video. So I was stopping through the mall and they had a vendor going on and he had like a little lot of comics that was like kind of wrapped up. It was kind of a little mystery lot. Uh, ended up paying $10 for it. Let's see what I got. This was the book that was on the top. This is how thick the little stack was. Um, not terribly thick, but I was like, yeah, it's 10 books and it's a spectacular Spider-Man on the cover. I don't have any issues of Spider-Man anymore. So I was like, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll snag that just because it has a Puma. And honestly, I always kind of like that character. So I got that. Looks like the Uncanny Avengers issue number four with Deadpool. That's less exciting because I hate Deadpool. Um, we got Marvel's Ghost Rider, issue number two. It looks like a modern comic. Um, $3.99 cover, so I'm not really excited about that. Uh, I am excited about that. I think I already got one of these recently. Uh, Marvel 3000, Guardians of the Galaxy. Amazing Spider-Man on Mars. Either way, it's a, it's a nice, nice copy of it. Damage Control number four. I think I have two or three issues of Damage Control. I do not have issue number four. So having issue number four of that is pretty neat. It's kind of an odd book. Um, it's about a team that goes around and just cleans up after uh, after superhero battles. Kind of, kind of weird. Um, this one, uh, the guy said was in there, and I was very thrilled because uh, X-Force number four is probably one of my favorite issues of X-Force. The entire book is sideways. You have to flip the whole thing. And it's all... Uh, <clears throat> it's all Liefeld stuff. So if you're not into Liefeld, it's probably not your book, but uh, it's just, it's X-Force fighting the Juggernaut and Spider-Man is there. And I love this issue. I just, I've always loved this issue. Spider-Man's funny in it. I love the Juggernaut as a villain. Everything about it was good. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, an issue of Captain America with crossbones and bullseye. And there's Cap. He's looking a lot like uh, American U.S. agent. There. I suddenly remembered everyone's name on this cover. It's amazing. Uh, the Mighty Thor. No more Mr. Nice God. 435. Swinging a big gun there. Uh, this looks like totally a 90s thing. Uh, let's see if I can see it up in the corner. 91. Yep. Uh, need I say more? Uh, issue another issue of Thor, um, four sixteen. I'll have to see. I love this cover. That, all that that whole red cover. That looks very cool, and it kind of looks like uh, it almost looks like Jack Kirby art. I mean, it it's not, but it's got a Kirby feel to it. It looks very cool. Plus, um, I have another lot that I purchased uh, recently of Thor comics that I was looking forward to running through, also. Back off, you hosers. I get the front cover. It's in my contract. I think that's in everything that Wolverine gets the front cover. Uh, what the Marvel comic presents, issue number nine. Kind of a funny cover there. Uh, fourth wall breaking. Guardians 13. I think I also acquired this one recently because uh, it's Future Ghost Rider, and I love Future Guardians, and that's just one of those cool books. Um, X-Factor number 71. This is like the pinnacle of X-Factor being really cool with my favorite X-Factor team. Um, Havoc, Polaris, Strong Guy. Um, why did I forget your name? Feral? Because I think it was like two, two like lion, wild, wild animal creature ladies. And I think Feral is the one that was like a cat. And I think this is, uh, the one that's like a wolf. For some reason, I can't remember their names right now. There's Jamie Madrox, the multiple man. I don't know. That's a thing. Um, X-Men number 33. I already have this. Uh, it's a beautiful Andy Kubert cover with uh, uh, Gambit. I'm doing a lot of uh, X-Men videos with just the regular X-Men comics. I'm in the I'm in deep into the Kubert phase. We just got done with Jim Lee phase. And now we're moving on to Kubert stuff. And I'm kind of not sure which I like better. I think Kubert... I th I think Lee's probably is I favor more. Kubert I, I like a lot. It looks like Lee's, but it's only a little bit more hurried and rushed. So I don't know, you know, kind of take it either way. But it's very good either way. 
Um, this comic, The Amazing Adventures, uh, number 10, the original X-Men. I don't know what that is, but it's a 50 cent cover, 1980. This book was a year before I was born. It's nice, but, uh, that was in the lot. And then the last issue was X-Men 34, which holds the, uh, well, holds the distinction of being the very first issue of regular X-Men that I bought. Uh, just kind of a random one-off. I grabbed it because it had Gambit on the cover, and I thought she was pretty. I had just started playing the video game, you know, the X-Men Sega Genesis game. And so I got that, and uh, that I bought it mostly because I was like, hey, it's got the Gambit on it, and he's the cool one in the coat. And then I found out, like, reading this comic that he was, like, French, and he had a weird accent, and I thought that was cool, too. And that's why I got it. So, yeah. Issue 34 holds a soft spot for me. Uh, so I was glad to see it in the lot. And then there's actually a couple issues in here that were uh, uh, kind of key issues for me. So, I, I, in my opinion, this was totally worth the uh, $10. I'm going to back that up just slightly there so you can see the bottom. Um, well, let me know what you think. If you saw this uh, pile of comics, would you give 10 bucks for that? Uh, I'm going to say most of you probably would. But uh, you let me decide. You tell me what you think. Anyway, that's my story. Thank you guys so much for watching. My coffee is almost empty. I've, I'm on like my fourth video I've shot in a row and my voice is tired, but I love you. Thank you so much. Um, catch you later. Bye.